Hello there, and welcome back to the Galactic Burrito. I am your host, Darian, reporting right out of DJ's Cantina, Patooine. Um, It's been a while. It has been a hot minute since we did one of these. About a year, actually. Um, And that is my fault. Um, I've just been so behind and doing the college stuff and just going through... Uh, life, you know, and so I have not been able to make another one of these episodes. Um, I also haven't um, caught up on Andor, which is another big thing that we will talk about. But I am watching The Mandalorian, Season 3. Um, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. That'll be next episode. This episode is just Star Wars Celebration. We're going to talk about all the new stuff. Um, all the news, all the trailers, information, um, just like we did last time. You may be wondering, well, there's something missing from this, right? Um, yes, my droid, CB7. He is currently in the workshop. Um, let's just say he, makes, he made a few patrons mad. Uh, yeah, he's got to get a little tune-up na- done now. Um, I'll leave it at that. We will be back next episode. Rest assured. Um, yeah, I guess we can get ready to go ahead and get into this... Um, uh, this whole summary. I'm getting this from Volk.com, so um, you can go check out their page if you want to read what I'm reading. So yeah, um, Star Wars Celebration started on uh, Friday, April 7th through Monday, April 10th, or was it a Thursday? I don't know, it may have been, it may have been Friday through Monday. I think it was the weekend. Um, first thing I want to talk about, and what I am personally most excited for out of all of this, I think, um, and then again, I could change my mind later on, is the Ahsoka trailer, the teaser trailer for Ahsoka, um, a show we've known about for quite a while now, um, knew what's happening. And this is what it says here on the website. After many years of appearing in shows like Clone Wars, Rebels, The Mandalorian, and The Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka was finally get her own series. Ahsoka's story will be a direct sequel to Star Wars Rebels. Sabine Wren, Hera Syndulla, Chopper, and Grand Admiral Thrawn will return for this live-action series. It will release on August 2023. Um, let's just click here to learn more about the Ahsoka. Thanks. So, um, I watched the trailer. It looked very good. It looked really good. Um, I haven't... Now, I, I've t- I said this before. I've never watched... I've watched some of Clone Wars. Never watched Rebels. That is something I would be open to doing on the show if all of you would like would like that, you know. Um, this, is, this is strange. This is my first time doing a podcast episode with just myself, so I'm used to having Landon having his like affirmative, like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. I all this stuff. But, uh, um, yeah, I, um, I would definitely be open to reviewing those projects. Um, starting off here, though, reading about the Ahsoka series, more about it. Um, First, let me keep touching on that trailer. That trailer was really good. It was, um, I mean, you saw the Rebels characters in there. I mean, I recognize them, I know them, um, but I've just never watched the show. Uh, let's see. I mean, Grand Admiral Thrawn mentioned, I mean, he's the villain, it seems, um, which I'm excited for. He's mentioned in The Mandalorian, um, newest episode of that, which is episode seven, time of recording this. Um, next week, like I said, I'll review the whole season. Um, then we'll get into Andor after that. I'm excited to do that. Um, I mean, I just I thought it was really good. You know, I I do want to say the lightsaber colors did look a little bit strange um, with the villain, the villainous looking characters. Um, uh, I don't know what the deal was with that, but um, I mean, yeah, it looked good. I I ain't got much else to say about that. I'm excited. Was this a teaser? I'd like to see some more, but I'm all here for it. You know. Um, but Ahsoka Tano's journey began at Clone Wars uh, 15 years ago. Let's see, um, going through, she Star Wars Rebels. Her or- she saw her origins on Tales of the Jedi, and she'll be making and she made her live action debut in season two of The Mandalorian. Uh, let's see. 
So uh, Ahsoka will take place after the events of Star Wars Rebels. Ezra Bridger is still out there after the Battle of Lawful. He and Thrawn were taken into an unknown space by the Purgle. Uh, I apologize if I'm saying this wrong. Purgles? Purgles? Uh, for years, their fate has remained a mystery, but that is about to change. With rumors of Grand Animal Thrawn returning as the new face of the Empire, it's imperative that someone prevents him from turning the galaxy upside down. Also, if Thrawn is back, then there's a good chance that Ezra is still alive. Sabine Wren, Harrison Duel, and Chopper will do their official debuts on live action series. There's no confirmation yet that the Ghost crew will get back together to go search for their old friend, but I think everything is pointing in that direction. A list of currently known cast members are Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, Natasha Leo Bordiso as Sabine Wren, Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Harrison Dula, Aman Esfandi as Ezra Bridger, Genevieve O'Reilly as Mon Mothma, which is nice to see her back. She was on the trailer. And Diane Lee Inosanto as Morgan Elsbeth. Additionally, Ray Stevenson it will be playing Balin, and Ivana, Sh- so- Ivana Sakno will be playing Shin, uh, the two antagonists in the series. Ivana has confirmed that Shin will be Balin's apprentice. Still unclear that if they are Dark Jedi or Sith, but learning that they are Master and Apprentice is still meaningful. Highlight is that Lars Mikkelsen will be playing Grand Animal Thrawn. Uh, Lars Mikkelsen being Mad Mikkelsen's brother, I think, right? Um, he also voiced character star wars rebels so that's really exciting um nice to have him in live action so i mean you'll you'll be able to put the voice to the face now um grand Admiral Thrawn is incredibly smart and cautious this person says they consider him to be the best strategist in the entire galactic empire um rosario dawson says she really wants Soka to have a second season um which i've Apparently, um, rumors are going that if it just went as well, they will green light a second. The first season of Ahsoka will have eight episodes. Um, yeah, I, I really like the Ahsoka trailer, though. A little teaser. I'm excited to see more. Really am. Uh, moving on, though. Uh, let's see what's next. Jedi Survivor final gameplay trailer. Um, this is a game that comes out. I'm recording this on the 15th. It'll be out probably in the next Friday. So this will be it'll be out a week from when the game comes out. Um, right yeah so okay yeah this yeah week when you guys are hearing this um i will be getting the game i might stream it i might not i might just tell you guys what i thought when i come when, in an episode but um i'll i'll make that judgment when that time comes um but critically acclaimed jedi fallen order game is getting a sequel cal kestis marin grease and seer junda are coming back together to fight against the unstoppable galactic empire the motives have changed, and not all of them agree on how things should be done, but one thing is sure. Someone must try to help the people of the galaxy, and there isn't a better team for it than the Mantis crew. The final gameplay trailer was released, and um, it says released on April 18th. Is that true? When does this game come out? I thought it was the 28th. Let's look. April 18th? That's true, this in three days. There's no way. April 28th. Yeah, this, web- this website's wrong. Okay. Um, but I probably will be pre-ordering the game. Um, that is, that is for sure. I just haven't pre-ordered it yet, but I'll, I'll probably will. I just haven't gotten around to it, but I'm excited. I'm really excited. I love Cal Kestis. Uh, BD-1, horrible droid, same model as CB-7. Um, he's, he's not a BD droid. Um, CB, because he's, well, that's a long story, but we'll get into it. You know, we gotta save all that character build up for the rest of the episodes of the podcast. Anyway, um Yeah, I'm I'm really excited for um Star Wars Jedi Survivor. It's shaping up to be pretty good. As good it looks as good, if not better, than the first one. Um and from what I've been hearing, the customers seeing seeing too, the customization looks really good. I mean customize his hair and his facial hair it looked like. I don't know if that was real or not. This um that video it may have been. Lightsaber, more customization with the lightsaber and the clothes. I'm assuming with BD1 as well. So it's really nice. Um, it's really nice to see that. And um, yeah, like I said, uh, you guys let me know if you want to stream that game or not. I will definitely do it. If not, then um, and I won't. So that's that. All right, what's next? The Acolyte. Okay, so this is another show. I believe we talked about it last time. Uh, let's see. Let me get the information here. Okay, so yeah, the Acolyte will be the first Star Wars live action series of uh, set in the High Republic era. So this is a this is the era I believe where the, all the books are set in. 
um, a bunch of the a bunch of the like the novels and stuff that are pretty popular. I haven't read any of them, but um, I have heard that they are pretty good. Uh, so it'll take place around a hundred years before uh, Episode One, The Phantom Menace, and we'll learn how the Sith began to infiltrate the Republic. Uh, Leslie. Yeah, okay. Leslie Headland, the showrunner, stated that for the first time, we'll experience a Star Wars series from the perspective of the villains. This is something that they've always wanted to do. Darkness is just as important as the light, and people who make people who dwell in the shadows are complex characters with story arcs that can make us relate to them. Um, understanding the story of someone who has turned away from the light has always been increased, incredibly interesting. So, this person says they think the series is going to be very entertaining and fresh, and it releases in 2024. Let me read. There's more information here, so I'll. Uh, Open that up. I know the cast is pretty um, good. Let's see here. Yeah, uh, I already read that. Acolyte is the word Sith used to designate their apprentices, which is a, apparently says a lot about what we can expect from it. For the first time, we're going to get a major series that shows the perspective of the dark side. Um, I said, let's remember that these times are these are times when the Sith are thought to be completely extinct. They haven't infiltrated the Republic. And their influence isn't as widespread. In fact, this series will show how the dark side starts to slowly blind the Jedi Order, a process that culminates in Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Um, Amanda Stenberg, uh, I think it's the actress, is going to play the lead role in the series, but new information about some of the other characters and actors who will play them has also been revealed. Uh, Junus Suotamo, who played Chewbacca in The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker and the Solo movie, um, will play a Wookiee Jedi named Kelnaka. Uh, Lee Jung Jae, the star of the Netflix show Squid Game, is going to be another Jedi Master. Daphne Keen, who, um, for those Marvel fans out there, played X-23 in Logan, uh, was a little more secretive, and she only mentioned that her character will use a lightsaber, um, which ever, this person says think, they think she's perfect to play a dark side character. A small trailer was shown to the, all the people at the panel, uh, but all of us who are at home will have to wait to see it. Uh, people said that the footage was shown to them had a ton of Jedi, lightsabers, alien races, and an incredible fight scene. Others describe it as a very dark, almost Andor-like trailer. Interesting. According to the presenters, the series won't focus as much on the good or bad side, but it will highlight the importance of power and how those who have it will use it. Um, Power Public features incredible stories. You normally wouldn't see in the more mainstream Star Wars media. Um, Angry. Pause this. Okay. Um, yeah. So the acolyte. That's a show that I've always been. When they announced it back, um, was it last year? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If it was last year at Star Wars Celebration or not, I can't remember. I I do remember them, and that when they announced the show, because I was there and I was I, I interested about it. It was the whole like they what they call it a mystery thriller kind of uh, theme show. I don't know. Um, I was excited about it though. I'm, I'm very interested. Um, it, it's just come out in 2024. Yeah. Um, so definitely we'll be tuning into that. Um, okay. We got next up here. We have three brand new movies announced. Um, now it's been a while since the last one. Uh, we you know Rise of Skywalker was the last big movie, and we saw how that how well that did. Kind of ending out ending out the. Saga on a whimper there, but um, this is Dave Filoni, uh, you know, guy head of Clone Wars, Rebels, and now he's uh, doing the Mandalorian. Will be in charge of culminating the stories of the series, like the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and the Book of Boba Fett, with one movie that will feature a big and epic battle. Um, this is a movie we don't know the name of. I don't think I've heard. I've seen some stuff going around that people are calling it heir to the Empire because Thrawn's the big villain, Grand Animal Thrawn. And um, it's you're gonna have the this will essentially end out the Mando verse, if you will, of story. Um, I guess kind of, I guess bridge that gap from all this into the sequel series of movies. But um, another movie, and this um, this one actually sounded pretty interesting after doing some research. Uh, Dawn of the Jedi. Uh, and it's, it's an era that happened 25,000 years before the Skywalker saga. The movie's going to be directed by James Mangold and will tell the stories of the first Jedi. It's an unexplored period in time, so the possibilities are endless. Um, it's really interesting. And from what I read, it's a story about the first Jedi, uh, or not first Jedi, but the Force in general. Like, how is the how is it discovered? And 
like why did they use like how do they use it and all stuff and james mangold doing that i think would work perfect james mangold obviously he did logan he um let's see what else did he do he did um indiana jones five and then oh no right five this is a new one six i don't remember um vile destiny that one uh i think it's five and um he did he's done a lot of stuff uh he, dc wise he's doing um Swamp Thing. He's directing the Swamp Thing movie. Um, that's really exciting, though. Um, Dawn of the Jedi, that's a movie I'm definitely looking forward to um, hearing more about. And finally, the one that everyone by surprise, I made a lot of people mad. Uh, Daisy Ridley is returning to her price her role as Rey. She'll be creating a new Jedi Order 15 years after the events of The Rise of Skywalker. Still unknown if other characters will return in this movie, which will be directed by Charmin Obayad-Chinoy. Oh, oh, Obey Chinoy, I think her name is. Um, my personal opinion on this, uh, it's just like I don't, I didn't like the sequel movies. I thought Force Awakens was good. Um, that's Jedi wasn't all that great. Rise of Skywalker's just meh. Um, and Rey was just not an interesting character to me. Um, and at first she was interesting, and I was like, oh, who's her? Who is she? Who's her parents? Or like, who is she related to? And I was like, oh, is she, uh, is she Obi Wan's daughter? That's who I really wanted. And then I was like, oh, maybe she's, um, I don't know. There's like some rumors that were going on, that, like Luke's daughter, or um, different stuff like that. And then it turned out to be Palpatine's granddaughter. Like it's kind of, it's kind of boring. Um, so I don't know. It, it's still too early to tell with this movie, but I'm. I don't know. From what I heard, the movie's called a new Je Star Wars: A New Jedi Order or something like that. Um, I'm not that interested, but we'll see. Maybe something will catch my interest. I tell you what, it might interest me if we see a grown-up Grogu in the show or movie. I mean, um, fighting. Also, you know, because I mean, he'd be grown up by then. It would be around that time where he'd probably be a Jedi master, like around the same age Yoda was when he became a Jedi master. So. Uh, yeah. Skeleton Crew. Next thing we're going to talk about is show. It was announced last year, but almost zero details were revealed, other than Jude Law plays one of the leading roles. Um, they had a panel this year, talked about some stuff. Story will follow a group of kids that go on an adventure across the galaxy. What could possibly go wrong? It's described as Star Wars meets the Goonies. Jude Law will be joined by Carrie Condon, Ravi Cobo Conyers, Tyrene. Tiriana Cratter, Robert Timothy Smith, and Ryan Kiera Strong, Armstrong. Sorry. The list of directors for the Skeleton Crew include John Watts of Spider-Man, Homecoming, Far From Home, and No Way Home fame. Uh, David Lowry, Jake Schreier. So um, I'm pretty sure Jake Schreier did Black Widow. I Don't quote me on that. Bryce Dallas Howard, we know she's good. You know, Mandalorian, she makes pretty good episodes. The Daniels, so... Being the people for that did um, everything everywhere all at once, I think they did. Did they do the whale? They may have. Um, and Lee Isaac Chung, which I'm not too sure who that is. Him and David Lowry, but um, Skeleton Crew. I don't know. It. I heard some rumors saying that the pirates from Mando season three are going to appear in this, and if that's true, I think it'd be pretty cool. But for now, I need to know more before I um, before I invest my time into the show. I'm not too interested in what its what its premise is. I mean, Star Wars meets the Goonies is cool, but why do I want a bunch of show about a bunch of kids going across space? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it will be released later this year. That's surprising. I did not expect that. Um, here, let me plug up my computer here before it dies on me. There we go. All right. Second season, Tales of the Jedi. So, uh, during the Clone Wars panel, Dave Filoni said that the first season of Tales of the Jedi allowed him to bring new people and teach them to do Star Wars, just like George taught him many years ago. He also gave a very emotional speech stating how the love of the fans and the hard work of his team make him feel incredibly grateful. Tales of the Jedi is one of his many ways to say thank you, but also form, a men form to mentor the new generation that will eventually take over. There isn't a release date yet, but um, as Prince said, they're sure it'll be as entertaining as the first season. They said they personally love to see more about Saj Ventress in the days of Palpatine as a Sith acolyte. Um, I didn't watch Tales of the Jedi. Um, I knew of I know of the episodes and whatnot. 
Um, but that is um, that's also something I would be willing to watch um, when it comes to watching the Clone Wars and Rebels. Um, so that's exciting for all you Tales of the Jedi fans out there. You know, season two, sneak peek, and Andor season two, which I don't know much about season one, so um, I can't really say much. But um, I mean, it's exciting they're doing the second season. From what I've read, and I don't know if it says it on here, season two will be even more intense. Um, every three episodes, okay. So the second season will last twelve episodes. Every three episodes will be a time skip of one year, and the series will conclude. Uh, it says right after Rogue One. From what I thought I read, it was series will end right where Rogue One begins. And this will be it. I originally thought the show was supposed to be five seasons. So I guess they changed their mind. But um, two seasons is fine. It's kind of weird that's going to be a one year time jump in between three episodes. That's kind of. I don't know. Maybe they can do it. But, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to review Andor starting in a couple weeks here. Uh, See, we'll see what the, all the hype is about with it. I heard it's, some people say it's the best Star Wars show, and some people say um, it's the best. So I've heard that it's the best Star Wars show, and then also some people have called it the um, it's like barely Star Wars, but it's somehow the best Star Wars. Um, so I don't know. It says here, Return of the Jedi returns to cinemas for its 48th anniversary, and it, um, April 28th, the same day that um, that uh, Jedi Survivor comes and comes and goes on sale. Um, we'll be going to select cinemas for its 40th anniversary. Um, it's very exciting. The poster looks really cool for it as well. Um, the High Republic team has announced the remaining books and comics for Phase 2 and the titles for all novels of Phase 3. Wave 1 of Phase 3 will begin in October 2023 and finish in March 2024. High Republic has lots of content. can be overwhelming at first, but it's really worth reading. There's so many good characters with interesting backstories, and everything is built very cohesively. Unlike the more mainstream Star Wars media, the stories of the High Republic can get very dark and devastating for anyone who gets attached to the characters. That's exciting. I need to rush it. I'll pick up a book and review it. It's exciting. It's sounding. Star Wars Visions Volume 2. This was a treat to hear about. Um, it was a collaborative effort of Lucasfilm and animation studios from all over the world. Uh, it featured short, nine short episodes, all of them made by a different studio in Japan. Every episode reflected the identity of its respective studio with compelling stories and distinctive animation styles. Um, details for Visions Volume 2 were revealed a few months ago, and the official trailer just got released. Star Wars Visions Volume 2 release date is May 4th, 2023. Fourth be with you. Um, it's very cool. Uh, Star Wars Visions is a really unique idea, um, and I will definitely be checking that out. I haven't seen Season 1, but I mean, I'll, actually, that's not true. I saw two episodes of Season 1, the first two. And then, yeah, I think... I, I'm, I'm really excited to see more of this. I mean, I think with the new animation studios, but there's just an infinite number of possibilities for how well this could go. So we'll see. And then um, here we got a Bad Batch final season. Season two of the Bad Batch uh, apparently left a shock and grieving, uh, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> so Bad Batch is another thing I got to watch. Um, it will return for a third and final season in 2024. Um. And then they announced the Star Wars Celebration will be going to Japan April 18th through the 20th of, of 2025. So, in two years. So, yeah. Um, was that really a two-year hiatus? Yeah, okay. After a two-year hiatus, it returned last year, and this year it went to London. Now we're going to be another two-year hiatus. All right. Um, I mean, hey. Well, I mean, this seems like a lot of good news. Some okay news. But, um... I'm very excited for what the future of Star Wars brings. Um, at the moment, Mando season three is currently my least favorite season of the show, which is unfortunate because it's it's such a good it was such a good show, and I don't I don't know what happened. I think them putting Mando currently like in the back backdrop kind of he's a side character now. He's not really a main character, and it's. I don't know, I think it kind of sucks. But I mean, I'm there with it. The newest episode was my, f my favorite so far, but I'll talk about that next week when I do that review. Um, I think with that being said, though, I talk about all I can. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I need to mention other than please let me know if you want me to stream Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Um, speaking of that, um, streaming, I'm going to be streaming Resident Evil 8, uh, Resident Evil Village VR. Um, just one little episode that would be fun for you guys who enjoyed me playing the game originally. Um, 
and then trying to think anything else we had a normal episode coming out Sunday Monday and uh, Watchmen review on that past Wednesday that you guys uh, we've seen this so that being said I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I thank you for joining me for this returning episode of the Galactic Burrito and as always may the force be with you bye guys <laughs>